Hi, thank you for joining us. This is Carissa Terway with Mamaki, and today I wanted to go over a how-to on how to do small box packaging with the CGAR and our printers, but you can use any printer on this application. I'm using two different types of paper on this application. For the boxes, I am using 16 or 18 points uh, coated two-sided paper. For the table stands and the gift tags, I am using 24 point coated one side tag paper. So let's start with design and you'll see the layers that I have and I have my clear layer and my cuts and my registration marks on different layers. So what I'm going to do now is create the, um, the crop marks through Fine Cut 9. So I'm going to make a bounding box and then in my Fine Cut 9 tool palette you'll see that I will select the registration marks and then you will select what size of marks. I always like to add a print direction arrow on there as well and what this does is it allows the plotter to read those crop marks and then you will send the crop marks and your cut lines and your score lines over to the CG AR cutting plotter. You can see that I have my creasing lines and my cut lines on different layers as well as being different colors so that I can set my creasing tool for the creases and my cutting tool for the cut lines. And so to save these out, I will turn off my cut lines and my creasing line layers and save out each one of these artboards. And you'll notice that um, I will create a folder and I'll put all of my print files in there because I will need to make a print file for each one of the color layers as well as the clear that we're going to be doing on each one of these prints as well. I like creating um, artwork with several different artboards. That way when I save it out, it saves out each file individually. So I will save out all of my artboards. Um, I have several different, I think 12 or 13 different images um, ready to go because I want to do several different boxes together. And I'll show you how to print all of these designs um, at the same time on our JFX uh, 200 model later. So you'll see each one of them are going to save out. Then I'm going to go back to my layers and what I'm going to do is I will turn off everything except for my clear layers and I have set all of my artwork to magenta. That way it is very easy to um, line these up and when I save out the artboard they will um, line up perfectly together when they print, which is nice. Notice I am turning off all of the registration marks as well. So I'll save these out in the same folder, but I will call them clear so that when I'm adding them into Rashalink, I know which ones are clear and, wh and which ones are going to be my color. So these will save out as well. Notice that when you are saving out the artboard, it will add um, the number of the artboard to the end of the name, which is also easy. So these will save out. Now just for training purposes, I'm going to bring these into Rashalink and I'm going to record my screen so that you see how not only I bring them in, but also how I am able to add all of these into the same jig print. So we're using 12 by 18 pieces of material. And so I'm going to create a jig print so that uh, we can have several different images. Maybe we want one of this image or three of the copy of that image and so here's the folder that we put that in and I'm going to bring in each one of the files, both my clear files and my color. So of course when they come in, they'll be at the bottom of the queue. Um, I'm going to use my favorite that I have. Of course, if you'd like to 
add a favorite maybe I'll do a video on that soon as well so all of them will come in so while the other files are going to come in I'm going to create my jig print really quick so I'm going to select the um, the artwork and I'm going to go to jig print I will name the jig print first and add um, add it by clicking the green plus mark and now I'm going to put in the specifications for my jig layout. I'm wanting to fill the whole bed with these pages. So I'm going to go and start at the zero, zero. First thing I'm going to put in my material size and put the counts as one. And then I will put my first position at 0.75, 0 0.0, wherever you want your first position to be. And I'll make sure on my layout that I'm adding in that it is going to center. You'll see I will be able to get 16 pieces of artwork on this, um, on our JFX 200 or 600 bed. And if you would like to add some bleed in between these pages, you can do that as well. So after I have my jig set up, then I'll go over to jig definition and you'll be able to see you can rotate or scale. So I'm going to go back and all of my artwork has come in and I'm going to select them together and go to the arrangement tab and arrange them together with no space on the scan or the feed margin. And you will see when we go back to the jig print, you can find the jig print that you made in the pull down menu. And then in the jig layout, you can do any of your scaling or rotating. As you see, I'm going to rotate it. You can either select onto the image itself or over on the left hand side, select the artwork and make the changes you need to there. So now that everything is rotated, I will start adding my copies. Again, you will select which one you want to add copies to. So on this one, I'm going to add copies to my blue design. I will put two on that one. Um, on my snowman, I will add three. So you'll see how you'll be able to go in and customize how many you want of each image. So I'll fill the whole bed full of artwork. And you can actually use, since we're just using paper, you can use the uh, two different types of paper on this uh, layout and print those at the same time as well. And so now that we have our print file ready, let's take it to the printer. As you see, I am adding all of the sheets to the printer and setting it up. Um, it's quite easy to get these, but you'll see that one of them was a little bit crooked. So I made sure everything is nice and flat. And here we go printing. So on the JFX 200 I have in the showroom in Texas, I have the LUS 120 ink. And that is important because that is the ink that you're going to want to use for box applications because it's going to have that elasticity um, to be able to fold those boxes together and your ink not crack. I suggest that you check the paper that you are using because some papers... Um, will crack on their own. So make sure you do testing and find the paper that you're wanting um, that'll be best for the application. I'd like to give a shout out to Clamp It Paper, one of our dealers here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. They supplied me with the paper that I'm printing and using for this box application. So remember the JFX 200 or any of our JFX line, um, and our UJFs for that matter, can print color and clear simultaneously and that's what I'm doing with these boxes. Each one of them are going to have a little bit of clear on them as well. I am printing this at 600 by 900, but 600 by 600 would have been fine too. I just wanted my clear a little bit more. So now that everything's printed, we're going to go back into Illustrator and send our cut lines through the fine cut. So you're going to turn off your art layer and you're going to select uh, the registration layer as well as the cut lines and the creasing tool. 
So on my Fine Cut 9 palette um, in Illustrator, I'm going to hit select my um, artwork. I'm kind of going to go in slow motion here and then you will want to hit the second button on the top. That is going to be where you are going to send just the information that you have selected. Uh, the far top left button is going to send everything on uh, your screen. So as you see, when it comes into Fine Cut 9, I am going to rotate it first. That's why you can tell which way you loaded your paper in by that print direction arrow that I like to add. Then because we have registration marks on this artwork, we are going to click the register mark and detect mark button. When you hit the detect mark button, you will see that now I am going to select to make sure that I am selecting cut conditions for each one of my layers. So what you named the layer in Illustrator will come up and so on my creases I'm going to use the creasing tool and on my cut I have my cut six set up for my thick paper. So once I have both of those selected then I am ready to push plot and send the information over to the plotter. So once you hit the plot button, you'll see another screen come up. And on this screen, I really don't make any changes, but I do like to select that my creasing tool will double. You'll see it down there at the bottom where you can click it on and off. Um, so you can make a few changes here if you want to, but of course, what we're gonna wanna do is just send it over. If you have problems, please make sure that your plotter is in remote. I want to stress how important it is that you are setting up your cut conditions on the plotter and test cutting them for the different paper um, as well. So after you send it over to the plotter and you're sending it and we had that double crease on it, then let's go to the plotter. So because we told Fine Cut 9 that we had registration marks on it, the plotter the first thing it's going to do is go and search for the registration marks. Now remember what you're seeing here is the small packaging option that you can get with the CGAR plotter. Now the plotter will call out to first put in the creasing tool. So you just tighten that down with your finger and then you push remote and you'll see that now it is going to be doing the creasing lines with that creasing tool. And if you remember in the fine cut menu, I did select that we are going to do the creasing tool uh, double on this. It will depend on the thickness of your paper that you're going to uh, decide whether you want to or need to double crease or not. Remember this piece of paper is on the plastic mat that goes along um, with the packaging option for these plotters. It's just a adhesive type sheet that is used as a cutting mat. If you're going to use larger paper, of course, you can use two at a time. So then once the creases get done, then the machine will come out of remote and it will ask us to put in the cutting knife. Remember, if your layers in uh, Fine Cut 9 are on the, if your creases are on the bottom, then it will ask for the creasing tool before the cutting tool. So now it's gonna ask us for the cutting tool. We're going to loosen that back up and then put in our cutting tool. And then you'll see that you can pull it off away from the cutting mat fairly easy. Thank you for joining us today and please watch for new application videos. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment below.